Hi folks and welcome back once again to another episode of Home Build Happiness. Today is a product review video and this is one I'm, I'm kind of excited about and I don't know why I haven't done one up until this point. Today we're going to review this guy above me here. It's an Ampere Time 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now this battery is very popular with um, you know folks that do off-grid installations, uh, cargo trailer conversions, RVs, uh, van builds, and things of that nature. And the reason why is because lithium iron phosphate technology, it allows you to hold most of the battery's voltage above roughly 12.8, 12.8 to 13.3. It has very, very, very low uh, voltage drop under load. You can do high rate discharge, high rate charging, this particular battery, it's got some fairly impressive specs, especially if you're used to... <laughs> and look, even, as you can see, even Durf the Cat's interested in lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you're coming from the world of flooded batteries, this thing's going to be pretty impressive. He just can't get enough. Let's check it out. All right, and this is our battery. This particular one is the Ampere Time Lithium Iron Phosphate 200 amp hour. They make two variations of this battery. One's got a 100 amp BMS. The other one has a 200 amp BMS. The model that I have is the 100 amp BMS. Nominal voltage is 12.8 volts. The length of this battery is 20.5 inches. The height is 8.54. And then the width of it on this, this side here is going to be 9.37 inches. The charging voltage is 14.4 volts. I charge this battery at a max of 14.2 volts. Maximum discharge and charge is at 100 amps. The recommended charging current is 40 amps. I currently charge this battery off of 400 watts of uh, monocrystalline uh, Renogy panels that are mounted on our roof. And then we also supplement charging with a Victron IP67 uh, Blue Wave charger. This battery has two lugs up top. Those lugs are going to be M8. They are 16 millimeter. The total draw that you can take off of this battery is 1,280 watts. The energy rating from the manufacturer is 2,560 watt hours or 2.56 kilowatts. They say, depending on what information you look at from Ampere Time, they rate this battery at 4,000 cycles. Some say 4 to 8,000 cycles or 10 years. As far as the temperature, this battery does not have low temp charging protection. You can charge it from zero degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, and you can discharge it down to minus 20 degrees Celsius, all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. For those of you who are concerned with what all the charging and discharging parameters are on this battery, All right, so what we're gonna do to test this battery, because I don't have a bench uh, type setting, most of you who are following us on this channel already know that we're full-time RVers. We rely on this battery every day for our electricity, so I don't have a, a bench testing type environment. What I am going to do, we have a, a watt meter that's hooked onto the inverter. Now we're gonna run everything pretty much we're gonna make it a freezer in here. So we're gonna run everything as, as cold and as high and as bright as we possibly can in this unit to uh, discharge this battery. Now, ideally folks, we would wanna have a shunt installed on the battery side for charging and discharging. And we would wanna look at the watt hours that we're pulling off of this battery. Now again, because of the conditions that we have here, and the fact that it is set up for us in, in our living environment. 
Now we're going to look at full discharge. That's not going to count um, inefficiency from the inverter. So we're only going to see the power that's being drawn after the inverter. Now what I'm going to do when we charge this battery, I'm going to run our um, I'm going to run our charger. Once we reach full charge, I'm going to look at the charging both from our charge controller and also from the Victron app. And we're going to basically add those together and look at our total charging current. Now, a caveat that I'm going to make to this is that I'm not going to tr do a true full discharge. We're going to run it at our discharge rate, which is going to be around 400 to 500 watts. Under that voltage drop, when BMS cuts off, I'm going to end the test. I'm not going to lower lower the draw and then continue to draw it all the way down to zero. With that being said, if I get 90% capacity, I'm going to be happy with that because I'm not taking it down to true zero. For those of you who are looking for more of a, a bench testing environment type test on this battery, Will Prowse over at Will Prowse DIY Solar. actually does a test on the Ampere Time 100 amp hour and then also the Chin's 200 amp hour which is essentially the exact same battery just with different labeling on it. If YouTube will let me, I'm going to go ahead and link his video right up here in the corner. You can click on that. Uh, he does a more in-depth review of this battery where he actually cuts into it. He splits everything apart. He looks at the, at the construction of it. All right, let's get to work. All right, so there we go. So it looks like we were able to get about eight and a half hours out of this battery. Our draw peaked out a little over 900 watts. I believe 909 was the max draw that we got. We pulled from the inverter 2.23 kilowatts. And we also know that an inverter is not completely 100% efficient. Matter of fact, most inverters, you're going to get anywhere from 86 to about 93% efficiency. Now, what I'm going to do is charge this battery. We're going to look at what we're actually charging back into the battery. If we get 200 amp hours, that's awesome. But please keep in mind that per ampere times, documentation 0% is 9.5 volts on this battery I stopped it at 10.8 under load and that was at 400 watts so if I were to drop that load down to about 40 or 50 watts I could have probably taken another I don't know maybe three to three to six amp hours out of it but we're just not going to do that let's charge it up and see what we can get So it looks like all in all, with our charging, mm -hmm. we pulled about 45 amp hours off of our charge controller. And it's in Florida, it's a rainy day right now, it's in the late August, so we're getting showers every day. So off of solar we pulled 44, almost 45 amp hours, and then we pulled just shy of 151 amp hours off of our Victron charger. So with that, it looks like we actually got a complete draw of 
195 amp hours. Now also keep in mind that we were still in absorption charge when I ended this test, so we weren't even in storage yet. So with everything taken into account, I'm very satisfied with this battery. Had a guy have lowered the discharge rate and went the rest of the way on the battery, I'm sure we could have got that additional, what, six amp hours out of it. And then on the charging side, I'm also sure if I would have let the absorption charge carry on through, we would have been able to up that, that total charge current as well. Now honestly, considering what this battery is, what it does and the price point, especially when you compare that to your Trojans and your golf cart style uh, uh, leaded acid batteries, I would say all in all, this is a great deal. Now this battery I purchased off Amazon. If you look in the description, you're gonna find an affiliate link that's gonna take you to the exact seller that we bought this battery from. Now I have had some communication with Ampere Time and it wasn't because of any defects with the battery. It was more of a customer service issue and they were more than accommodating. Um, I, I honestly have nothing bad to say about these folks. They've been a great company. The battery does come with a five year warranty. I can't speak on the warranty because I have not had to use it. I know other people that have mentioned that you have to send the battery back to them and pay shipping. I can't really speak about that because I've never had to deal with them on a... Honestly, it just works. <laughs> so I can't really say anything about the warranty. And a great thing about a lithium iron phosphate battery, especially the way that we're using it up here in a cabinet, it's only 46 pounds. It's not very heavy at all. It also does not off gas under normal charge and discharge conditions. There are some exceptions to that, but in the way that we're using this battery, no off gassing whatsoever. So it's a safer option if you are using it inside of a structure the way we are. It's a light battery. And this battery actually powers, as you've seen in this video, and also our air conditioner review, which I'll link up here. This battery actually runs our air conditioner overnight, every single night in this rig. And that's that's not a stretch of the truth. That's not a lie. We boondock a lot. We're members of Harvest Hosts, and a lot of the places that host us do not have power. And I do not keep generators hooked up after dark just because of the fact of theft. We don't want that thing to grow legs and walk away. So this battery is supporting this air conditioner in Florida in the summertime every night. Right now we're maintaining 71 degrees as we speak. And you can see right there we're set to 71. It is 72 degrees in here. Right now it is 1222 in Northeast Florida. So listen, the battery is definitely capable. It does a great job. If you're looking for something for uh, a van build or a CTC or even in your RV, folks, listen, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you wanna see more reviews like this or you wanna get notified of these videos when they post, go ahead and click the subscribe button and then also you'll see a little bell come up. Ring that bell, put it on all, that's going to set your notifications where you get notified every time a video like this gets uploaded. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.